Hi everyone, Sandy here. Welcome back to tutorial video number two for my Halloween tombstone box. In video one, we assembled the base of the tombstone and put the pattern paper on the inside and the gray cardstock on the outside. In this video, I show you how to make the door, add the cardstock paper, pattern paper on the inside, attach the door, and decorate. So let's go ahead and get started. For your door, you will take the chipboard piece that you cut out in video one. Uh, this is the larger size. It should be six and one quarter inches by eight and one quarter inches tall. And then you will take your template and lay it on there. Now you will have a little bit of edging on each side, a little extra space wider and a little bit longer at the bottom. And this is what you want. Then take your scissors and go ahead and cut the rounded part out at the top. I'm marking it as door to make sure that we don't make a mistake. And now we're ready to add some finishing hinges to this. So these have been made. You cut these as we showed in video one. These are one inch wide by 12 inches long and then you cut them down to fit. You score the one inch side at a half inch. So you should have two six inch ones. One six and one eighth possibly six and a quarter. You might want to measure the base of your your door and then you need the eight inch one that goes around the top. So what we're doing is we're going to finish off the edges of the door and I'm using score tape so I'm applying this to each half inch section on just one side of each hinge. So go ahead and do that. In this segment, I have already placed the hinges on the two sides and the bottom of my door. This is just really easy. Peel the backing off, put the chipboard into the fold line of the hinge, and attach to both sides. This is just a flat attachment. This is a finishing the edge of the chipboard. Then for the curved top one, you will need to cut each half of the hinge. Do not cut your fold line. You will need to cut V's as you see here in the video and then go ahead and pull the backing off and then you will attach it to the curved piece of your door to finish that curved top edge. So go ahead and do that and then we'll get ready to uh, create the hinge and pattern cover our door on the front with cardstock and pattern it on the inside with pattern paper from the collection. Go ahead and cut a piece of the gray cardstock to cover the outer side of the outside of the door. And this should be at least six and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter inches. So go ahead and cut one piece of cardstock. And then you're going to use your door as a template. I'm just measuring to make sure that I cut my piece correctly uh, long enough. You don't want it to be too short, so you want to make sure that you're getting it long enough and the eight and a quarter should be correct on that. So I'm cutting down my length here. And 
lay it on the side here of your cardstock line it up with the top part at the top and then go ahead and draw your cut line and again use your scissors to cut that out. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting two out of the cardstock. I decided that I do need to pattern the inside of the door with the gray cardstock and then cut down the pattern paper that I'm going to use a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the front side with my glue and make sure that you burnish it down so that it lays flat. and make sure you line it up at the top so that it covers up all the edges of the hinge there at the top where you have the V-cuts. Now I'm just fitting it onto the box to make sure that it does fit correctly. And I have created a hinge. You need one piece of cardstock that you have cut to six inches long by one and a half inches wide, score the one and a half inch side at three quarters of an inch. This is the closure hinge. I'm putting glue on one half side of it after I folded and burnished it and I'm attaching this hinge to one side to the left side of the door so I'm putting it on the side that has does not have paper on it yet. Put the fold line towards the cut edge of the left side of the door if you were looking at the finished pattern side. So I'm going to burnish that here. And then we will put the other piece of cardstock that has the curved top onto the back of the door. So this is the way it looks with the hinge on the left. So now lift up your hinge, open it up, and then go ahead and pattern, uh, put the cardstock paper down onto the back side of the door over the hinge piece that you just attached. Now we're ready to attach the door to the box and we will be attaching it to the hinge part that is still remaining free. We're going to attach that to the inside of the box on the left side. So I should have not patterned this side right here yet, um, but it's okay. I, I have plenty of that paper, so what I will do is cut another piece and cover over the hinge. So I'm going to go ahead and put my glue on the back side of the hinge, the hinge part that will attach into the box so it would be the side that is facing the front but you put it in flush with the box and you kinda have to hold it with your hand the best you can and then try to reach in there let it grab a little bit and then carefully lift it up and get your hands your fingers in there at the top and then burnish it in to make sure that it's on straight so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up and now that it's had a little chance to grab some and burnish it more and straighten it if you need to right quick and use your bone folder to go ahead and burnish. So like I said this could have been put on before we patterned that side of the box so I apologize for that but it is a small strip it's about a six inch by one and a half inch or even less than that that we're going to recut and add into that. So once it's attached then gently bend it back and score that where it opens to to make sure that it closes and opens. Okay now it will have a closure so don't be concerned that it pops open at this point. Now that the door is attached with the hinge we're going to open it up and go ahead and repattern that left inside wall section there on the side with the pattern paper. So I've grabbed my 
spider web paper and I'm going to cut it down. Let's see, this one's already six inches, so all I need to do is cut off a little bit here to get the just under a one and a half inches. And go ahead and ink the edges and then use your glue to put this pattern piece of pattern paper over the hinge on the inside on that left side wall there. Now we're ready to put pattern paper on the inside of the door and I'm also going to do that in the spider web paper to match the rest of the inside of the tombstone but because I had to cut that extra little piece this leftover pattern paper of this pattern of the web I don't have a long enough piece but I'm still going to use this I don't want to cut into a full 12 by 12 sheet so this will be up to you I'm going to be adding a pocket to the bottom of the inside of the door so it's okay I just want the top part covered with the spider web so I'm using the door to get the curve for the pattern paper because I still can't locate my white piece of paper that I used for my template so I'm going to use the door if you have your template then certainly use that because it would be easier for you so go ahead and mark it and then cut out the paper and glue that down to the inside of your tombstone box door. Before we start adding the Nouveau Mousse to uh, make the tombstone have a marble or granite look, we need to punch the hole for the knob on the side. And I'm using the Tim Holtz d pulls, the a door knob pulls. And so I'm just going to center it on the right side of the box. So I'm going to mark with my pen. And because of the location, now if you have a big bite and you want to do this before you even assemble the box, that would be a good time to do it. But I'm going to use a big awl, or you could use a piercing tool like the pink one there but I have a big awl that I got from Harbor Freight and it just you can just poke the hole right in there I know it's off camera because I had to have it close to me so that I could see it and then what I do is I sand the inside to make it smooth so that when the screw goes into the the knob and you may have to cut some with scissors that it will lay flat inside there so I've got the hole ready and set that aside and then we're ready to grab our Nouveau embellishment mousse and I am using the platinum color that I got from countrycraftcreations.com so here's the mousse now grab like a paper towel a dry cloth I'm just gonna cut off a piece of the uh, cheesecloth that I have here laying down for my Halloween decorations and I'm gonna do a tester so I suggest that you do a test on a scrap of cardstock as well to see how much you need to apply. I think that was a little too much so I'm just going to do a little lighter touch. Whoops, still too much. It takes a little practice. So you just want to dab it around and get that kind of molted look. So it takes a little practice on how much to pick up on your cheesecloth. I think maybe a paper towel or something might have been better so you just need to practice with that. I know you can't, that doesn't show up very well, but I'm ready to go for it, so. Uh, maybe one more practice run here. So it's looking a little bit better, not as heavy, and you can keep going over it, so I like that. So that's going to work. So now I'm ready to go for it. So grab your box and then start dabbing the embellishment mousse on all of the gray cardstock. So that would be the sides, the bottom, the front, the back, you know, the front of the door, the top curve. Anywhere there is solid gray cardstock, you want to put that little molted look to make it look like marble or granite. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and we'll get this all 
covered and ready and it does dry pretty quickly it's not like a paint so also make sure you get the edges the finished edges of your box because you want the whole thing to look uh, have the same look Once you have all the embellishment mousse on all the cardstock areas of the tombstone box, you can go ahead and put the Tim Holtz knob back on the side. Now this is just a place to attach the charms and the fixed part of the chain that will be the closure. So I needed it larger on the side like this to hold the different elements that I want to add. So just go ahead and put the screw in through the hole from the inside. And I'm just playing around with this little piece that comes with it to make sure I've got it going the right direction. And poke that through and then take your knob and twist it back on. And sometimes you have to work at it to get it to go through. It's the screw part's not quite long enough sometimes, so you really have to press down and really work on it. So we have the knob on and we're ready to start decorating our tombstone box. I noticed that I forgot to put mousse on the cardstock on the inside at the very bottom edge of the main part of the box. So I will do that off camera. You see there I haven't done mine yet. But I will get that done. So we're ready to start decorating. To decorate my box I have pulled out a lot of Halloween elements. Some I will use, some I will not. And then I did some fussy cutting out of the Nightfall paper collection, the spider. Uh, I cut up the words on tr the letters on trick or treat on one piece and uh, created the word rip, rest in peace. And then I also cut out one of the trick or treats. With my die cut machine and white artisan cardstock, I punched out the ghost. And I also used black artisan cardstock to punch out the fences that you see and the trees. So use whatever dies you have or if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette you can cut out different shapes out of the cardstock that you want to add onto your box. So the moon of the witch is fussy cut out. We also have sticker sheet. So just get all your different Halloween things out. I have, uh, there's the fence. I have some twine laying here but I'm not sure if I will use, like I said, I probably won't use everything. I also uh, die cut out some bats. I have a punch there with a bat. So I have started here in this segment gluing everything down. This is how I glued it down. The R and the I and the P, I did layer those on some cardstock to give them some lift. And then I also had to add, for my closure, I added a hitching post, which you also attach the same way as you do the knob. I used chain and I uh, used ribbon to tie charms with the chain and the ribbon to put charms on the side and I had a little padlock charm to put on the front and that's how I tell where to hook the chain over the hitching post to close it. So this is the front side and right now I'm just showing you how to use uh, add some glue in and attach some a piece of the cheesecloth or if you want to use medical gauze or actual web 
to create just a little spooky element of gauziness. Could be fog, spider webs there down at the bottom. I will cut apart some of my little plastic skeletons to add in some bones, maybe a hand sticking out, a foot. So this is the front side of the box. It's the side that is flush on the front and you will be able to open it up and on the inside we'll add a pocket and then um, later on I will do a tutorial probably next week on how to make a little album that goes inside. It's going to be really really cute. It's going to be in the shape of a two, uh, casket. So uh, that will go inside. If you don't want a casket one then you can make a little square album but my tutorial will be for a little casket album that goes inside of this. So I'll also show you what I've done to the back side of this little tombstone box. Okay, for the back, I fussy cut around the trick or treat in one of the cut apart cards, and then I, on the second one, I cut out some of the skulls. And what I have here is scraps of black chipboard. Now, if you don't have black chipboard, you can use regular chipboard and maybe use a black sharpie to color the edges so that it will be black on the sides on the edges and I'm doing a stack layer of these. I'm going to probably put about three different squares glued together on the back of the skulls. This gives you the 3D dimension. This is a great trick that lots of designers use. Once I have all the chipboard layers added on to the back of the skull and let it dry just a little bit then I will take it and place it over the ones that are already on the box. So I'm going to go ahead and do the second one now. And I just wanted to show you this little uh, trick that I do to make the 3D look on some of the items. And of course, excuse the mess on my desk. This is the way it looks when I'm working on stuff. I'm um, just showing you the 3D lift on there. So here I'm going to glue the extra skull right on top of the one that's on the paper on the box. And the second one. And that's how you get some 3D look on your paper projects. I added a few more things to my box like the hand, the little bones, and some of the button spiders where I cut the shank off the back. Added a few of those. And here the little padlock is hanging there. And then also on the back you see the skulls I showed you earlier. I added some of the bats, another ghost, a fence, some more of the goss or the cheesecloth, more spiders, a, le a foot bone, an arm bone, another jack-o'-lantern. So just decorate yours up the way that you like it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And show you where I did get the bottom inked with this uh, Nouveau Mousse and here I'm going to show you how to make a pocket. So from your gray card stock you'll need to cut a piece that is three and a half by six. It's three and a half tall by six and I decided on mine you don't have to. If you have a punch, punch out of black. This one kind of looked like the tops of a fence so I thought I would use that. It's a, I don't know, I think it's e -Cake's success punch you could use a lace punch whatever you have if you want to do a punch on yours or you could cut a, the top of a fence with your die or your silhouette and so I'm just going to glue this to the top edge of that cardstock and I apologize I didn't realize that I had my camera pulled in so close on this particular clip so I'm just gluing the black punched fence that I made onto the back of my pocket and this will be a flat pocket that goes on the inside of the door and I cut out some of the orange jack-o'-lantern paper and that's what I'm going to mat onto the front of the pocket.
I'm inking the edges right now and then I will glue that down so there's the paper that I chose it's really cute like I said with the camera pulled in this close I didn't realize that a lot of this that I'm doing is not in the frame but what I'm doing is putting glue on the two sides well now actually right now I'm putting glue on all of the pattern paper and I'm gonna glue that to the cardstock pocket and then I will glue the entire pocket onto the back of the door by putting a line of glue on the left side the right side and across the bottom on the back side of the pocket so let me move this up maybe that'll help some so I'm just burnishing and wiping off some of the glue and burnishing this piece of paper down to make sure it sticks good now those little pieces that I have on the top of mine are a little fragile so they get bent and stuff but that's okay it's a spooky uh, project so it's okay if it has some worn and used look so here I am putting the glue on the back side just on the left and the right and then across the bottom to seal up this pocket and then this will fit down over that piece that was not covered and it will also cover the back screw side of the hitching post that is attached to the front of the tombstone box. So go ahead and burnish those down and wipe off any excess glue. So this is a good place to put extra photos, um, party invitations, whatever you might have to, to add in there. I'm going to just stick in some of the cut aparts that I already have cut and for now I'm going to lay this little skeleton in here. Uh, there will be a mini album that goes inside in the shape of a coffin. Here are a few of the cut aparts that I already had cut out and I'm just going to stick those inside. Uh, you could add like I said a photo mats and maybe a little booklet into this pocket and if you wish you could add some more decorations there on the pattern part of the pocket. I really like that paper so I can't decide I'm going to leave it this way for now. Later on I might add a belly band or something. We'll see. Okay, so I think that's it for now for this project. This is the tombstone box. It is complete. It has two part video, part one and part two. I did not do a showcase as I showed this here in pictures with it finished, but once I get the whole project done with the uh, coffin album and the box, then I may do a separate showcase video. But for now I have video tutorial number one and video tutorial number two for you so that you can start working on your new project. This makes a really cute Halloween decoration and I want to thank you so very much for watching and check back for my next videos. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and click on that bell for notifications of my next videos. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.